In recent months, uh, the United Nations, but also the United States, France, the European Union have accused Rwanda not only of supporting the M23 uh, group, but of being directly military involved in the DRC. There's just a new uh, report from the uh, group of experts at the UN. They said you're more and more present uh, in DRC, the Rwandan Armed Forces. Well, Is this the case? Because you've never accepted this, but clearly we're seeing them accuse you much more directly than previously. Why would Rwanda be in Congo? That question needs to be asked, or, or, or supporting M23 needs to be asked by anyone who wants to understand the problem and even later on deal with it. Because you have to understand what is M23? How did they come about? Rwanda did not create M23. They That's were created the by the international community is saying. Creating M23? No, they are saying, I don't think I have heard them say that we are the ones who created them. All they have said is that we are supporting them. And for me, the question is, we are supporting an entity that exists. Why? First of all, if it exists, why don't we look at the root cause of this problem? So the international community can also, I mean, just because it is international community, you don't accept everything they say or they question. You just have to go by facts. And this is what we keep raising with them. How do they explain that we have refugees, 100,000 people persecuted in Eastern Congo because of their identity? And now they want to turn them into Rwandan citizens when they are Congolese? And, and everybody is talking about uh, these accusations? I understand what you're saying, but can you answer that question? Are Rwandan military forces present can in DRC answer, for whatever reason? Can you answer my question as well? I'm not obliged to answer your question if you are not ready to answer my question. And this is what I tell the Western countries and others who raise these matters out of context. So I, I cannot just, uh, you, so I, you want to turn everything, a very complicated situation and a big problem, into a narrow thing of just accusing Rwanda of presence in Eastern Congo. No, and this is what I'm refusing. So let me try to phrase this differently. Do you feel that the situation in Eastern Congo is a direct threat to the security of Rwanda and thereby means that Rwanda will take any measures to defend itself, which could also mean military. We have said that publicly. Right. There's no secret about it. It's a threat in as far as Congo is running away from its problems of its citizens, whom it deprives of their, all their rights and kills them and persecutes them. And there is hate speech. There is actually genocide ideology operating in Eastern Congo. And this can't be happening on its own. So there's that persecution of these people being called Tutsis, and therefore they must suffer like those in Rwanda in 94 suffered. Then there is the support for FDRR. These are genocidal forces that have been in Congo for close, for now, 30 years, actually. Now, why, why, what is this international community asking or what to raise They've questions also asked they the raising? Congolese they are, government why? to take their distances and deal with the FDLR. What is that? I mean, do they have to beg them to do that? They are begging them. So in other words, they are telling Congo, solve that problem if you want. But if you don't want, we are still with you. Is that the case? So for us from that, the question you are asked, are they, is this a threat? Is that situation a threat to us? Absolutely. And shall we react to that in a manner we think fit to resolve that? No question about it. Is war with DRC a real possibility? Well, you referred to what President Sekedu was answering and or raising as questions. Among other things, I think he has told you and others several times, even recently, he was talking about taking war to Rwanda and removing the government and blah, 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 blah all kinds of things. Well, if somebody is saying that, and in this kind of situation, well, on one hand, you may think this person is bluffing or he has nothing else to say other than that. 
but at the same time, given our own situation and experience and history, we don't take anything for granted. We are ready to fight. Elections are scheduled on July the 15th. Uh, you only have two opponents, uh, no real opposition. Obviously, uh, many observers believe that uh, this uh, will be obviously very easy uh, for you, too uh, easy, uh, because they said there's no real uh, opposition, no real democratic uh, life. Uh, why is Rwanda still uh, a democracy where you have very little opposition after all those years? Is it because of you? For the opposition, there are those that exist. Even if you call them few, that's fine. I don't know whether there is a number that one must Many have. Many were disqualified, you know that. I mean, and there, there is this notion that it's a controlled election, essentially, not a full-fledged election. Yeah, that's half the story. If, if they are controlled or whatever, do you understand the process? I think if you are interested in knowing what is happening in Rwanda, you have to understand the process. Mm. And our process is no different from other processes anywhere in the world. Right. But being elected with 90 or 95 percent, do you think it's a healthy thing for Rwanda? Because that's the most likely result. The situations and the contexts are different. I don't even mind that somebody is elected by 15 percent if that is their context. But why should you worry about somebody being elected with 90 percent if that is their context? Because in the end, it is the context that he decides. Uh, there were uh, some reports recently uh, conducted by a series of media organized called Rwanda Classified, uh, which report about a pattern of uh, repression uh, inside Rwanda, outside Rwanda, against uh, those who oppose you. Um, we don't obviously have time to cover everything. Uh, I want to touch upon the, the case of an investigative uh, reporter, John Twali, who died in uh, January 23, officially from a motorbike accident, according to the reports. Where? In, in Rwanda? In Rwanda, yes. Mm -hmm. According to the reports, uh, there's a suspicion that he was actually uh, eliminated uh, because of his work, his investigative work, because of his opposition. What do you make, this is an example of those reports who are essentially saying that you're behind a repression machine and sometimes a killing machine. What they are doing is not trying to be right and correct. and They haven't even investigated what you are talking about. But it shows where they come from. It's always an attitude, it's always uh, arrogance, it's always, when it comes, even like uh, we are sitting here, uh, journalists from these countries will feel happy, you know, throwing a mud at me and using me, literally insulting me, that, and in the end they pass for being heroes. So you deny all those allegations? No, uh... answer my question because I'm not supposed to be here in front of you <laughs> answering allegations. You are not the judge. I'm not being prosecuted. Here we are talking about, we are reasoning. We are talking about uh, journalism. We are talking about politics. Mm. And we have to have facts and evidence for what you are talking about.